All right, welcome, welcome everyone to this video on dealing with demonic narcissists. So this, unfortunately for everyone, is a widespread topic, right? It's a widespread phenomenon. And we're dealing with narcissists on an epic level. Um, this is something I've had unfortunately for me, but fortunately maybe for you, I've had a lot of experience dealing with. And so I've learned quite a few things about dealing with demonic narcissists. Um, we can exclude the word demonic and still treat it on a human level, um, but I find it uh, interesting to, de to deal with it on a spiritual level too, because often you have the fusion of the human psychology and also the spiritual realm when you're dealing with narcissists. Um, demons love narcissists because their human will is basically fused with that of the dark side. So what tends to happen with these people is that demonic strongholds are developed in these people, which means a whole host of demons um, a very strong infestation of demons can manifest in these people and they can work through these people to make your life a living hell, uh, literally. So uh, this is something that those of us who are chosen or maybe you've just given your life to Christ uh, or uh, maybe you're coming into your spiritual gifts and you are chosen but you're, you're new um, to these spiritual gifts and um, and you're up against these challenges, this could be the video for you. However, if you're still trying to understand narcissism, I do have another video on understanding narcissists, and this could be helpful, I think, on a psychological level. And when you can understand it on a psychological level, sometimes it will give you more empathy for the narcissist, or at least more understanding of the narcissist. Okay? so. These people, uh, I've, I believe, and this is my own conjecture on this, are placed in our lives to test us in certain ways and to make us stronger. The Lord uses people like this to strengthen our own faith in God, and it causes us to hearken unto Him to gain insights, to gain protection, to gain faith in him. So I believe these people are placed instrumentally or at least allowed from God to be placed by the devil so we can use this, these experiences to gain more and more spiritual wisdom. Okay, um, I'm gonna get right to the point. How to deal with these people? Well, their mission is to try to disrupt you and it's not necessarily to try to disrupt you on a physical level, although um, that will happen, but it's more on a spiritual level. Uh, narcissists want to do one thing. They want to move your emotional center in God. You may want to write this down. They want to move you from your emotional center in God, which is what? Which is peace. They want to disrupt your peace. Most of what these people throw at you is all bluff. That's how demons operate. It's bluff, but if you take the bait, what can happen is you'll disrupt your emotional center. Um, you may start feeling anxious. You may, start, you may start feeling unworthy. You may start feeling like you're losing your mind. They will manipulate all of your assertions, all of your... Um, reasoning, all of the conclusions you've made, they will gaslight you and make you feel like you're crazy or that you just don't think correctly. That is how these people operate. Now, let me also uh, preface all of this by saying this. There are many people out there who have characteristics of narcissism, but are not in fact, a narcissist. They just have certain characteristics. And what I see a lot of time is people who call certain people narcissists, and if you actually looked at the qualifications for the DSM, they would not, in fact, uh, make it. They may have certain characteristics, but 
it really has to be, I think it's, uh, I know it's either three out of five or five out of seven or something like that of the characteristics to qualify. So we must understand that some people in fact are good people, but they do have qualities like pride that come out sometime and this could be demonic. It could be triggered by certain situations or certain vices they've had in the past or currently that are open up, opening up doors for these demons to manifest and then it will cause them to go into um, this type of behavior that just drives everyone nuts. Um, another thing is drugs and alcohol. Some people are fine on the surface and then as soon as they take a drink or as soon as they take a smoke or as soon as they pop a pill now all of a sudden those de uh, those demons within have a foothold in that person and they will start to manifest this is very very common um, when the person is sober they are uh, maybe nice people and reasonable people but as soon as the demons get a foothold baby it comes out full flesh full um, full fire and um and you have to really be on guard so how to conquer or how to at least protect yourself from these narcissists well number one you need to get yourself in the scripture before you interact with these people um, when you're dealing with strongholds and demons these are not anything you want to play around with uh, it's they're powerful you feel it just be by being in their presence you can feel that stronghold just holding back and it's waiting to lash out you have whole host most likely I'm not saying it everybody's like this but most likely there is a whole stronghold of rage just waiting to be unleashed on you these people can be extremely hateful they can be extremely envious they can be extreme, extremely uh, fearful of your influence on them, and therefore they're extremely defensive. So when you start hitting on their trigger points, they will unleash on you full on. And what you don't want to do is get yourself to where you're walking on eggshells on them, which can easily happen if you're not putting yourself in the Word of God. So... Um, one good way to do this is to read scriptures before you interact with them. I recommend something like the Psalms. Um, Proverbs can be good. Uh, the New Testament can be good. Something like Isaiah is really good. These will fortify your aura. What the narcissist is doing, the demonic narcissist especially, is looking for chinks in your armor. These demons have way more awareness than a normal person, okay? Especially if you got multiple demons in the person. They are looking for spiritual chinks in your armor that they can pull out and play with and throw little sly insults on you. They know how to push your buttons. And unless you're immersing yourself in the Word of God, and what I also suggest is saying these scriptures out loud because that will reinforce the vibration within you, Unless you're doing this, then they will come up on a chink in your armor. And this could be something maybe you weren't perfect or you thought the wrong thing, you said the wrong thing. And they'll twist it around and make you the most vile person in the world. They'll, they'll at least try to make you the least, uh, the most vile person in the world. Trust me. But look, here's their ultimate goal. They're trying to get you to lash out because... It's what proceeds from our heart that harms us. It's what proceeds from our heart out through our mouth that harms us. It's not that we're sitting there listening to them. It's when we start to react to the narcissist, that's what gets us in trouble. So their mission is to get you to lash out. That's why they will say all these crazy things to get you revved up and angry and to say something that normally you wouldn't say, therefore, it's going to corrupt you. It's going to cause you to sin through your own mouth. That's what their goal is. So the strategy when dealing with these people needs to be do not react. Okay, write this down if you have to. Do not react. Stay in your peace. 
hold your peace with these people. It drives them nuts when you hold your peace. You've got to set certain boundaries too. Uh, when you're dealing with narcissists, they will look for every possible way to interject themselves in your life. And if you are just available all the time for these people, they will take advantage of that and they will hit you when you're vulnerable. They'll hit you when you're tired. They'll hit you when you're sick. They'll hit you when you are having a bad day. They will look for chinks in your armor to try to disrupt your emotional center in God. That is the key with these demonic narcissists. When you're dealing with strong, the strong man, it says this in the Bible, it can be helpful to bind that strong man. Saying scriptures like this, mentally binding the strong man within them. Scripture is very powerful when you're dealing with demons, and many of these narcissists have demonic strongholds. I'm not saying every single one of them does, but many of them do. And if you know who you're dealing with, then you need to go up to a higher level, which is invoking the Lord's word. God has ultimate authority over these demons. Jesus Christ has ultimate authority over these demons. When you have his words running through you, when you pray to him, when you ask a shield of protection around you before you interact with these demonic narcissists, you're going to feel much more solid. You're going to feel much more at ease, much more peace, and it's going to drive them nuts. What you'll find is the more you immerse yourself in the word of God, the less they're going to want to come around you. Um, that's just, those are just the facts. Um, they will may, maybe inevitably come across uh, your path, but they will want to keep their conversations brief with you because they know that you know what's going on. These demons are aware that you're a child of God. And when this happens, they want less and less to do with you because they don't want to be exposed when they're around a child of God and the child of God is mature in his or her Christian walk, we start having spiritual insight into what's actually going internally with the person. And this can cause these demons to manifest. And when this happens, that person may become aware of it and they may start to question themselves whether they have demons within, uh, but also, um, it's going to expose it for everybody else who's around. So you are a vital threat to these demonic narcissists just by being a child of God. You have an immense light coming through you when you connect to the Lord. And if you stay and you abide in the Lord's commandments, the Lord's statutes, your light will get brighter and brighter, and you're even more of a threat to these demonic, demonic narcissists. So be mindful of this, but enjoy yourself while it happens. Because when you abide in the Lord's peace, you start to see these things and it's, uh, it's kind of like fireworks sometimes, but don't react to it. Don't take pleasure that you have authority over these demons as it says in scripture. Just take pleasure in the fact that your name is written in heaven, as Jesus said. Um, this is a, it's a magnificent show sometimes to see these things. Um, but again, some of these people are very, very bad. They uh, may have bad intentions towards you. I suggest setting strong boundaries with these people. If you can get away with uh, limiting your interactions with them, I highly suggest that. Uh, some people will even need to cut them off. If they are dangerous, by all means, cut them off from your life. Look at it as a learning experience. Um, this is a topic that many things can be learned from, but try to learn about yourself. It's more about how can you keep your walk with the Lord firm and less about trying to fix that other person. People with this level of a problem, they're going to need a lot of fixing. Okay. And many of the demonic narcissists don't want fixing. Um, you're probably not going to have authority over their demons unless you are in a higher authority structure, which this could be a natural order, such as maybe you're the parent or the father of them. Um, but understand something that 
these narcissists often do not want to be fixed. And so uh, unless they are asking for that help, I would not necessarily offer it. Um, that's going to have to be up to you and God. But uh, that's been my experience. Um, again, I just want to get back to the main thrust of my strategy here is that do not let your emotional center be moved because ultimately that is their goal. They want to keep you in a state of fear or in a state of doubt. Um, as it says in scripture, um, that which one has feared has now come to pass. Uh, and this can relate us back to law of attraction. I know many people who are Christians don't want to hear about law of attraction because they see it as some kind of, kind of witchcraft. Um, I don't see it like that. I see it as a law. However, it can also be manipulated and used in witchcraft. It's more of like a law of gravity where if you fear something all the time, you're going to start to attract that thing that you fear. It's what you place your attention on, you're going to attract it. And it's the same thing with faith. If you have faith that something's going to happen, you know things are working out, then it generally will work out that way. And it also says this in scripture. So um, law of attraction is not a, it's nothing to fear. It's nothing to be um, uh, question whether it's from the devil. It's not like that. There are some law of attraction teachers who are witches. They are, uh, they don't include God in it. They don't see it as uh, something that is divinely gifted to us. They see it as something they can manipulate and play around with like sorcery. So yes, in that respect, it is bad. Um, but law of attraction is something we need to understand because this is how these witches are operating. They're trying to get you into a state of fear, a state of angst, a state of uh, despondency where you just don't want to live anymore. They want to get you to doubt yourself. And they also do this. They want to character assassinate you. This is something narcissists love to do. They want to attack your character. They don't want to talk about anything that is a, a legitimate argument, a reasonable argument. They, won't, they don't want to argue on the argument. And if you beat them in the argument, which you often do because they have no interest in learning, these individuals are often what the Bible classifies them as fools. So if you start trying to cast your pearls before swine, um, they're going to get trampled underfoot. Uh, and when this happens, you're not going to gain anything. So I would refrain from trying to teach these people. They don't like to be taught. Um, they have real brittle egos where if you try to teach them something, they take that as an ego threat and will then start attacking you. So uh, be mindful of this. And they also don't want to listen to you. They often want to talk to you so they can either get confirmation that what they're saying is right or they want to teach you something that you probably already know about because uh, they just, <laughs> they have no idea about you or what you know. They don't care to know you. So they probably are just trying to pridefully teach you something that you probably already know. So um, again, with these narcissists, y'all, if it's necessary, cut them off completely. If not, really limit your boundaries with these people because they can drive you nuts and they can try to pull you in to dark realms. And don't let that happen. Remember what I said on this video, keep your emotional center in God and immerse yourself in his scriptures before you interact with them and you'll be much more effective. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful on some level. Feel free to leave your comments below. Um, what has your experience been like with these narcissists? Can you resonate with anything in this video? Thank you again for joining me.